Hey guys, today I'm out here in Kanab, Utah, and I just wrapped up my first deep space workshop in February. We had a great time, and we were under a really dark sky out here, so it's been a lot of fun, but today I wanted to show you my new astrophotography setup for 2020. There's been some big changes, and I wanted to give you guys an idea of what I'm working with. First up, we have the new camera. This is the ASI 1600mm Pro. This is a monochrome camera, which means that all the photos are taken in black and white. However, it's much more sensitive, and you can do a lot of cool things with this. In order to create a color photo though, you need a set of filters, and that's why I bought the seven position filter wheel here from ZWO. This holds my LRGB and my narrowband filters, and when I use all those, I can now create a color photo, even though I have a monochrome sensor. All of that is mounted to my William Optics Space Cat telescope. It's pretty much the red cat, just gray, and uh, this does a really nice job. It's 250 millimeters, which if we combine that with the two times crop factor, gives me an effective focal length of about 500 millimeters, which isn't bad at all for such a small setup. Now up top here, I bought the optional saddle bar, which holds my ASI 120mm mini guider and the ZWO 30 millimeter F4 guide scope. And this auto guider allows me to get my star tracker to perform much more accurately at night. This is all mounted to the new William Optics components here for the Sky Guider Pro. And of course I am still using the SkyGuider Pro, although I'm starting to feel like I'm reaching the limits, but it's still holding up for now, so we'll see how long we can push with it. I normally have an extension rod here on the end for William Optics, but one of my students is borrowing it, so right now I just got the two counterweights. And all of this here is mounted on the new William Optics Latitude Base, which is a huge upgrade from the Ioptron one, although it's quite a bit more expensive as well. And I know a lot of you want to know what tripod I'm using, I get asked a million times. So I'm using the Faisal CT3442 tripod. This is carbon fiber, does a nice job, and uh, that's what I'm using. There's no center column or anything, which is nice as well. You get a very secure connection from your base to your tripod. There is one accessory I'd like to get though, and that's what a lot of my students had on this recent workshop. It's basically some webbing that connects to the three legs. Once you have that webbing down here, then what I could do is grab my battery and put it right here below my tripod, so that'll help to secure everything and eliminate the need for any kind of table. Moving on, we have arguably the most important part of this whole setup, and that is the new ASI Air Pro, which I guess these are still really hard to find, so I lucked out getting one early. And this is now the brains of my operation. I can actually do everything from my smartphone now, no laptop required, so I really love how small and portable this is and the fact that I can do everything now without having to bust out the laptop and set it up here and come out every 20 minutes and check on it. And I'll be doing a full tutorial here on the ASI Air Pro in about two or three weeks on my YouTube page, so stay tuned for that. Basically the way it works though is I've got a DC 12 volt power adapter, that's what you're going to need to power it up. That's connected to the Jackery 240 watt hour battery, which I have down here. So there's the 12 volt power adapter connected to the battery, that's what powers everything. And then up top here, the ASI Air Pro actually has four DC 12 volt outputs. One of those is connected to my new camera. And the nice thing is I can now control my camera's sensor temperature from my smartphone. So if I want to set it to like minus 20 degrees Celsius, I can just go in my app for the ASIR and set it. It's really cool. I can even switch all the filter positions around, set how many photos I want to take, and much more. And like I said, I'll have a full tutorial on that coming here in a few weeks. Finally, uh, the one thing I had a problem with was how the heck do I mount the ASIR Pro to my setup? Because right now I'm using that uh, dovetail bracket to hold my guide scope. And the ASAR Pro does come with one of these uh, dovetail Vixen plates, so you can do that if you've got the ability. What I actually found though is it's a perfect fit for an Arca Swiss ball head. I actually just found that out by accident. So right now I have a rock solid connection here on top of my traditional photography ball head. So if you find yourself in a similar position and you need something quick to hold your ASIR Pro, know that that will hold everything really nice and solid. But that's just a quick look at my new astrophotography setup for 2020. I just want to give you guys an idea of what I'm working with. And last night was actually my first time using this. It took me quite a while to figure it all out. But now that I have, I think it's going to be quite a bit easier in the coming nights. So if you want to learn more about this entire setup and how to actually use the filters and figure out the back focus and everything else, be sure to stay tuned here to my YouTube page where I'm doing a new video every Wednesday. And those are all part of my new dedicated astrophotography camera course. So that's all free here on YouTube. Be sure to check that out. And before we go, I want to leave you with my image I took last night, my very first photo with this new setup. I took the Orion Nebula 
It was only about 10 minutes per filter, so not a lot of exposure time at all, but still turned out to be a great photo. So that's all I got for you today, and I'll catch you guys in next week's video.